Hello, everyone, and welcome to a lovely Saturday morning. Not so much for me here in California as it is pouring rain. I'm sure for my co-caster, it might be a better experience. And we are here to show you Starcasting Gold Gauntlet. This is day number two, so if you missed day number one, well, you missed a lot of action. I'm here with Crocodonius. How are you doing? I'm doing really good, man. Uh, not much better weather. I'm I'm from Ohio, so we got a lot of snow, as you can see a little bit in my background out, out of my window here. Um, pretty cold out, but, you know, we're getting through it. We're doing our thing. And I'm looking forward to a good match here today um, between... Uh, yeah, so we have Ghost Going Ghost. Space. Yeah, Going Ghost in space and TD Lunar. Uh, TD apparently can mean whatever you want it to mean. So uh, we got a good matchup here. Um, you know... We saw a little bit of them yesterday, uh, especially for going Ghost in Space. Looked like a really dominant 2-0 uh, in their first matchups. Looking forward to seeing more of them today. It looks like they, I, you know, they drafted really well yesterday. Looking forward to uh, a lot of that again. And then, you know, obviously TD Lunar, um, you know, they they won their matchup as well. So seeing how these two teams can come together in this semifinal matchup to hopefully um, bring out a pretty good. Uh, overall uh, matchup i'm really looking forward to it all right well you're making it sound excited but you haven't really thrown in your lot here just yet crackadonia so where are you gonna be where are you gonna be putting all your eggs in which basket yeah hmm? yeah oh man that's it we'll have to see i i'm i think that going ghost in space based on their their you know yesterday's matchup you know obviously as i said very dominant um I haven't seen much of TD Lunar, but obviously since they've made it this far, they can't be too bad. Um, so I'm going to go. Um, I think it's going to be a closer matchup. I'm hoping for, uh, you know, hitting all three of those games for our best of three. Um, I'm going to go for a 2-1 towards uh, going Ghost in Space here. I, I, I'm, I have high hopes based on their drafts, based on what they're prioritizing uh, the other day to see hopefully we have really good results for a close game. But I also, you know, I think that they have the upper hand in terms of their draft for sure. All right. So going to be seeing some draft W's for going ghost here. Expecting this one to be a lot closer. I mean, it is deeper in the bracket. Both of these teams felling one opponent so far. And I'm interested to see who is also going to be climbing on the other bracket. I mean, we have a little bit of time. So this is going to be a bit of a preview into the finals match potentially here. So interested to see who's going to make it down. Uh, just throw your predictions for the other. Bracket. We're not talking about them, but, you know, let's do a little bit of hype for the finals in, in this game here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so looking at the other side of the bracket, we have CB Phoenix and Going Ghost Returns. Uh, CB Phoenix as well, you know, pretty solid 2-0 victory yesterday. Um, going Ghost returns with a 2-1 against TD Embrace. Um, so TD Lunar's uh, sister team over there. Um, on paper, Going Ghost returns looks like a really solid roster. Um, you know, looking at them, they a lot of really high gold players. Um, you know, a, a lot of really solid players uh, on their team. Um, on the other side, um, we have that uh, the CB Phoenix team also as well, really high gold players. I see, you know, everybody's gold one. We have, they even have a, a platform player, Hivar. I actually know him. Um, oh, yeah. Really, really solid player. Um, so they have a, a few, you know, pretty pretty good players on that team as well. So I think that's going to be a little bit closer of a matchup, to be completely honest with you. Um, and then that top side of the matchup is honestly looking, like, uh, pretty strong in terms of their, their overall – ELO, as well as their um, team chemistry is looking pretty solid, too. I think these teams have played together uh, for a little bit now. So um, looking forward to, to seeing that side of the bracket as well. Yeah, I do believe Ivar is going to be pretty well known on this server. Uh, team that I may be coaching for may or may not have scrimmed with Ivar recently. All right, look, while we were talking draft underway here we have three bands on each side and zary caitlin and zaya 380 carry bands already in the first round yeah i mean how it's been working recently uh obviously extremely extremely important i think to have those adc picks and so getting those off the you know off the table early especially at that fair that we have seen now get picked out um, for ggis uh, i mean i think personally 
you know, if you're going to be banning away that Zary, you're going to be banning away the Caitlyn, that's probably going to be your next, next best bet in terms of uh, a really solid uh, carry that also has a good amount of utility, especially if they're old. All right, they're going to fight that Varus with the Leona here. So I was I was wondering the classic counter to that Varus is the Ashheimer. They decide, nope, we're gonna go with Engage Champion. And now, who do you think they're gonna pair this with? Yeah, I, I think with the Leona, there's I mean there's a lot of things that you could do it with. Um, I think probably Samira would work out pretty well, um, being able to kind of get on top of that relatively quickly, um, as well as just making sure that um, you're able to to kill the Varus as quickly as possible. I think that's gonna be extremely important. Um, to see if they're able to actually um, mess that one up. They are put, locking in the Casio here. I think also ex extremely powerful AP pick specifically. So obviously they're going to want to go, you know, high eight most likely in the uh, the, the AD carry role as well as in maybe even that top lane with uh, some sort of bruiser or something like that or some fighter uh, in like a Fiora or something like that uh, as well. And then on the other side now, already quick lock-ins for that Renata in uh, Fiddlesticks as well. Yeah, a lot of team fight potential has just made its way on the side of Going Ghosts. Comp here, Renata Glass with that disengage fiddle, with that team fight engage plus AoE. Looks like they're trying to pack a punch around these objectives here. And a tank, Orn, making his way to the field. This is a monster top laner, one of the best tanks in the game. Plus, gives your team an extra boost in the gold department with those ornaments there. So looking like it's going to be an all-out brawl here. Yeah, uh, definitely looking very, very tanky on the side of TD Lunar already. Um, uh, and you see the Fiora ban. I was just going to talk about that. It actually got banned before I even got the, the mention of it. But uh, Fiora, obviously very, very good into Orn, very good into a lot of tanks just due to her, uh, the way that she's able to move around, um, be able to you know use uh, her repost to be able to keep all that CC away. So really good ban there. Um, that was what I was actually going to suggest that they go in the top lane ongoing ghost but um you know taking that that ban away that's exactly what these second tier bans are for um as well as that silent ban coming through for them here uh you know to help out the casio in that laning phase obviously not the strongest champion there in that laning you know as well as a lot of mages but um casio specifically you know really can't do too much pre-level six um you know i've heard like miasma and stuff like that um but going into these uh you know second tier uh drafts um we're gonna have to see what they end up you know kind of closing these drafts out with but on both sides looking very team oriented here yeah that counter silas i mean if you want to pick champions with good ultimates a okay, silas band is going to be in the works. Viego is going to be the jungle, so they're gonna be looking to burst down one target. Leon going to help with that and get that possession going. And now ghosts, or sorry, going ghosts have to refine their comp here with their last two picks. What are we looking at here? Yeah, I think there's a good chance that, as I said, a fighter top lane. So I wouldn't doubt if they end up doing something like a Jax or maybe uh, some. Yeah, Camille would work out great too. You know, uh, yeah, there's the Jax. Yeah, it's a new I think Jax. it's okay. very, very strong right now. Um, obviously, a lot of uh, split push potential, like J old Jax as well. But you know, getting that new ultimate makes him so much uh, more strong in a lot of team fights and even one v ones. And so, I'm really looking forward to seeing how that's going to work out against the Orn. I think it is Jack's favorite, um, similar to how the Fiora matchup is as well. Um, but we're going to have to see, you know, depends on how this Viego, how this Cassio are going to roam to kind of help out with that. And then Nocturne getting locked in here. That's okay. an interesting one. Uh, is that a okay. Nocturne mid? Um, I'm, is it Fiddlesticks mid? I can't tell. I don't know. I don't <laughs> know. That, that is a lot of team fight ultimates, though, regardless. So, um, obviously, going Ghost in Space is looking for that all in potential, trying to kill somebody as quickly as possible. And then they have the. Uh, the Renata ultimate to kind of uh, keep any of the main engage from the side of Team Lunar away as much as possible, especially that Leona and stuff like that. The Rise getting locked in here for the mid, or again, a weird pick. Um, so that must be Cassio bot Rise mid yeah. then. Um, so I guess Cassio, Leona, um, a lot of really strong AP champions here on the side of TD Lunar um, coming out. And I'm really looking forward to this matchup. I think it's gonna be an interesting one to say the least. Um, uh, a little bit uh, interesting and not normally 
I, I guess, meta picks coming out from both teams here, um, but they're looking very uh, impressive regardless. I really like these drafts. Yeah, I do think, though, that these drafts are very niche picks. I mean, yeah. TD Lunar, as you said, a lot of strong AP, but that is the core of their comp. I mean, let, let's talk about this. They're basically, what, 75% magic damage here? That is yeah. being able to be built against from the side of Going Ghost. And they, on the other side of Going Ghost, they're very low range comp as far as here. Yeah. How do you think that's going to interact? Because, you know, Rise, Cassiope, a lot of AoE, but then they're all magic damage, but then Going Ghost is all melee and they're super close range. I mean, what's going <laughs> to, this is a crazy, crazy draft here. Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing that I'm worried about, especially with Going Ghost, is um, their kind of lack of frontline, right? Obviously, you have the Jones. Nocturne can be a pseudo frontline champion, but he's considered an assassin in most scenarios. Um, so it's going to be interesting to me to see how they're able to find picks around the map, obviously on the Casio, on the rise, in potential side lane matchups as well, as they have a pretty nice split push. Um, you know, especially for the Jones and even the uh the nocturne can get a pretty good split push off uh you know from time to time as well so it's really going to come down i think to uh you know the, the overall macro of these teams and how they're able to kind of control vision control the side lanes um to be able to overall look at you know outside of just team fighting because both of these teams have solid team fighting potential however going doesn't have the frontline potential to be able to stay alive i think long enough to be able to deal with the orn deal with the leona cc uh frontline tank that you're gonna have uh you know as well as that viego on the side just looking for picks trying to get those resets on his ultimate things like that as well all right as the teams are rounding out their lock-ins here i'm just gonna have to ask for it straight what is your prediction for this game who takes it and and i mean who is going to be picking up the first win of this series yeah yeah i think uh you know as i said i think it's gonna be a, a definitely a close matchup here um i'm gonna have to go on paper i think uh you know going ghost in space has a slightly better draft um you know despite me criticizing their front line or their lack of front line rather um i think that the fiddlesticks is really solid right now i think the jacks is obviously very s tier uh in terms of the top lane i also think Varys, um is going to give them a lot of utility they need to be able to engage with not turn into fiddle six as well um and then obviously the renata a ton of peel potential with her ultimate with her uh you know e and q um just to be able to keep people alive especially with that w ability um to be able to kind of get that revive onto something like a Jax if he gets an early kill in a team fight um i think that's the the biggest reason i'm going for them although i do think that there's a lot of potential for a casio 1v9 rise 1v9 in the right scenario especially with which the team is um, so i'm definitely not going to count out td lunar uh, at the end of the day but i think that going goes to space just has a little bit of an edge there um what are your thoughts though oh uh, you know this one is uh, very difficult to because they both have some very clear weaknesses so it's going to be on how they play it out if ghost in space i think are aggressive i think they're taking a the more aggressive approach here and this game does not end up being too long i give the scaling factor to td lunar here i mean rise is a monster scaler orange monster scaler cassiopeia is pretty good scaling as well and once Orn gets tanky they can start hiding back right against the fiddle and the nocturne and the jacks but also if jacks takes over the game that's a potential to mess things up as you're saying in that split push style but you know in the mid game going ghosts have a very strong argument for winning this game i think it's there but ooh, uh, throw you a little twist there you thought i was gonna go going ghost huh I'm going to go to TD Lunar because okay. I believe in scaling. And you know what? Teams mess up all the time. I pick scaling. They're going to win. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, uh, you know, definitely a good thing. Uh, scaling always pretty solid. Um, and then, you know, with the ornaments, as you said, um, that late game is going to look very, very scary for TD Lunar. Um, I guess we're just going to have to end up seeing, you know, how it's going to end up working out, though. All right, and while we are waiting here, I'm just going to give a quick, very quick shout out to our sponsor, W Energy. I'm going to be telling you about them later in game number two. But for now, we're going to be hitting it to a quick break. 
as we are going to be having our first game lined up on the blue side. It's going to be going Ghost in Space versus on the red side. TD Lunar, don't go anywhere. This game's going to be coming back, back right at you quick. All right, welcome, and we are back. We got this first game kicked off for you, and it doesn't look like there's going to be anything crazy here, correct, Donius? Both teams going for a five-point. Looks like a modified 4.4 TD Lunar here. 
And what do you think is going to happen early game? What are we expecting to see? We do have a Nocturne, so power clearing ahead. But what about the more interesting Viego pick? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm pretty interested about this uh, this jungle matchup. The the Viego versus the Fiddlesticks going to be interesting to see how that ends up working out. Um, I am going to be extremely interested in the pathing of how they want to do it. Looks like the Viego is going to be starting towards the top side um, and pathing towards bot, which I think makes a lot of sense with what they want to do with the early game Leona getting onto this Varus or the Renata extremely quickly and trying to get an early kill. I think is going to be really important for them uh, to be able to kind of snowball that lane, especially with the ability to lock down on the Casio um, at level two, level three with the Miasma, um, you know, putting that with the the CC that you have from the Leona, taking down a target extremely quickly. Um, so I wouldn't doubt if we see a quick like level three gank from the Viego uh, in that bot lane uh, and potentially trying to get a little bit of early cheese going on here uh, onto that little, a oh, oh, pretty significantly squishier bot lane in the Varus and Renata as well. All right, we're going to see if that is going to be the play they go for. Go pathing bomb, as you were talking about. And they do have pretty nasty kill set up with that Leona as well. Renata is the only saving grace for that Varus, for that gank. So, looking forward to that. Oh, actually, um, oh, I, I, we totally messed up. It is the Fiddle jungle yeah. and the Nocturne in the mid lane. Or at least I messed that up, as I'm still waking up here, apparently. <laughs> rising to rising into nocturne though that does not sound pretty oh aggressive yeah. play coming out that uh obviously like, going for the level two there on the leona pretty important um knowing that they had that level two first uh varus able to back off in a in a decent amount of time to just barely get out of there um but yeah as you said you know looking towards that mid lane as well a pretty interesting matchup uh gonna be a hard one uh, at least early game for the Nocturne, he's going to get poked out most likely. Um, but, you know, having said that, this is a very aggressive bot lane right now. And, you know, Fiddlesticks is pre-level 3, uh, or is, you know, just now hitting level 3, but you can't take out his ability to be able to gank even in this early game. So with them pushing up so significantly here, you definitely have to be able to be aware of where that Fiddlesticks is at at all times. He does have enough CC to be able to get a kill with the Varus. Has a lot of burst at level 3 as well. Um, so definitely have to give them a little bit of, uh, you know, usage on that and to make sure that they're really paying attention to that. They have nice vision here in the bot lane as well. So none of that should be happening, but there is definitely potential for it. Nocturne, surprisingly, keeping up in CS4 now. Ooh, As that like ward this. is being cleared out, boost this, getting some poison no, no, no. and fangs in the face, oh, but the head. pull in from Samus, and they get the first blood. Unfortunately, Samus picks up that kill. Renata going to go up one and zero so far. Boost is trying to get the kill, misses that Ooh. arrow. And yeah, Worm Jones, you Ooh. were late by fractions of a second. And unfortunately, it wasn't there to counter gank in that push. I thought it was going to be safe because it was slammed into turret, but look at this. It's going completely in the favor of GG here. Yeah, and as I said, you know, you have to respect the ability that, uh, you know, Fiddle 6 could be there. As I said, you know, his level 3 is not super strong, but it's strong enough to be able to lock down, especially if you're hitting those uh, Renata Binds on her Q. You know, throwing that out, you just didn't respect it quite enough, and you guys are just a little bit too far forward. The Casio goes down. Um, and then, as you said, Viego just a little bit too slow on that rotation. Had to use Flash to get out of it as a result as well. So a really huge boost here for the side of uh, GGIS to be able to get a, a little bit ahead here. Yeah, they're going to be rocketing to the moon with that <laughs> boost right there. Adishan is still up in CS, so it's not all doom and gloom for this bot lane. Casio is probably still going to have a great time farming. Just shouldn't be getting hit by those claws in the next coming trades here. Kilgar taking a beating, but he wants to get the minions in, and he eventually succeeds in that goal. Yeah, and the top lane here also getting a lot of trades out. Yeah, Boreal with that extended wow. trade in the favor of Jax there. And Zircon just has to waddle out of there. First on a Bammies, that is interesting. Yeah, I think it makes a little bit of sense, especially since the Jax wants to be on top of you as much as possible to be able to get that those extended trades like you just saw. 
he does have the conqueror as well so he's definitely looking for longer trades as much as he can um so making you know taking the bomb he's getting extra damage while he's on top of you makes a lot of sense i think um especially you know with the ability to use that counter strike effectively um like he's using right now as well to be able to kind of just take over that wave no oh, that is a nice trade but Ooh. it is just a bait which uh, which is going to be able to pick up the fear is going to do the drain and chi trying to get out of there it's i don't even know how you say that name is i'm going to go with chi as uh, samus <laughs> is clearing a ward here and which at black mass is able to get another summoner out of the bot lane putting a lot of pressure down there yeah and i mean we can see this twitch even pre-level oh knock up zircon going for the kill combo does get the knock up again into the stun but unfortunately wasn't able to pull the full combo out and thus oboreal survives yeah yeah a little interesting of a, of a pull there it looked like he might have just ran out of mana i thought he was going to go end up going for it but maybe he just didn't quite have enough um you know he had the flash there too so maybe just playing it a little bit safer but now jack's back in lane with the teleport and uh you know it is a pretty nice trade there but now it looks like that uh, dragon on the other side of the map is going to be going to uh, this blue side squad. Going, going, or sorry, going ghost in space. Definitely looking really solid here in this macro early. All right, Arboreal, he's getting his long trade, the knockoff from Zircon. Ooh. However, Worm Jones flies right over the wall. Arboreal has to get right out of there, going to staff jump away. That was a bit of a dangerous situation. However, that Jax Q really saving the day. Woo. Yeah, I, I, and we're having a lot of action here early, but really no results coming out of it outside of that one kill that we had just a few moments ago. And now even more action here in both side, the top and the bot lane. Maybe a kill here. Oh, Zircon getting very low wow. and that Sheen strike right to the face finishes him off jacks picks up a kill and that's a good sign for going ghost they want their split pusher to be ahead they want their split pusher to be strong and it's looking like that may be coming to fruition here yeah and that's going to be extremely scary if he gets significantly far ahead especially into something like an orn the orn can't really do much oh and a nice engage here all right she gets the stun in the ground they're gonna keep renata locked in they're going for boosted as well has the renata passive but it is not gonna amount to much Beautiful double kill executed by the bot lane of TD Lunar here. Meanwhile, Kilgar and Witch trying to push in the mid lane again, but Worm Jones trying to punish him for it. Yeah, and the surprise party going a little bit wrong there. Not able to find his mark at the end of the day in the mid lane. Um, but overall, really nice engage coming out from the bot lane on the side of TD Lunar here. Uh, CHJ and the, the Miasma from uh, Sean as well looking really solid as a combo there you can see they just looked lost in that lane they didn't really know exactly what to do and there was really not much counterplay once that leona was on top of them as well even despite that varisol hitting on the casio yeah that is going to be something we have to look towards in the future two and one on addy sean and is getting ever closer to that two item power boost Looks like we have the Rift Rail being taken by Worm Jones, and Lucas is coming <laughs> right in to assist. And the Nocturne ult isn't going to result in the steal, but now Viego's low and looks like, of all people, Leona is going to be picking up the Rift Herald. Certainly not ideal, and they do lose two members for that Rift. Was it worth it, though, Krakadonius? I mean, I guess it's going to depend on how they end up using it, right? Um, you know, if they're able to get... Uh, a solid early game turret or at least a good amount of gold onto somebody that really matters you know getting this varus or this Jax, you know even more uh or sorry uh, rather on the other side uh you know getting this casio even further ahead um probably needs to you know happen here if they're gonna you know make use out of that because they lost a lot of gold in that trade overall you're looking to be about 500 gold down uh in terms of the amount of you know gold that the blue team is getting here and I don't think it's worth it at the end of the day, but it really is going to depend on how they use it. Yeah, they could get a full five plates and a kill after a dive. That is possible. And then certainly it is worth it. But looking on the average, it is going to be a questionable play. Looks like they're trying to set up something a little bit cheeky here on the bot side going ghost. 
have set up a potential kill. The fear gonna land on just one Adisha. Wow. Gonna turn fire immediately, but the root and damage from boost this gonna completely wipe the snake off the field here. Leona is tankier, is trying to make the way out. Doesn't get the execute damage on that Varus. Royal showing off that new ult, but just a flash of it, so we don't get to see much of that fight there. Looks like they're going to take a few plates on the way out. And Zircon, he's got another chance at the kill combo. Can he get oh. it? Double knockup doesn't get stunned. The breath doesn't pick up the kill. And those wow. autos were... No oh, oh, wait. Wait, those were invisible. Burn. The invisible autos pick up the kill. I thought it hit the minions. Wow. I can't believe it. And oh, Luke is just missing the Q on the rise there. Just out of range. And I mean, what a play across the map here from both sides. Zircon being able to pick up that nice solo kill onto the Jax, getting a little bit too greedy for him, a little bit too far forward with not enough health to be able to survive the billowing uh, autos there. And, I mean, we can see right now it's going both ways, action-packed first game, and I'm looking forward to this series. I mean, such a close game number one, just a 400 gold lead for going Ghost, which, I mean, at 11 minutes is basically nothing. Yeah, and the scaling factor is for TD Lunar. So they're going to have to watch out on going Ghost. They're going to have to make sure these mid plays start going their way. Rift Herald going to drop. They get a nice clean three plates on the return. And, well, I mean, they died and they come back and get three plates. I guess that's uh, that's going to even out that play. Next Dragon up on the block here. Both teams are in position. Top lane firing away at each other as they are jockeying here for position. Krakadonius, who has advantage? Yeah, it looks like for me, the red team is the first team here. They have the vision advantage and they have the Viego looking for something, but uh, it's a little bit concerning with me with the Nocturne. Oh, Nocturne now. comes right in. Kilgar in the flank. Renat Olfin only hits one. Wow. As we have the Leona going down in the front like They're absolutely burned by Boostus. That damage coming out is huge. Adisha is trying to get some damage on the way out. They do pick up one. But it isn't going to be enough to win the fight. And that Nocturne flank was a perfect distraction for this Varus damage to roll right through. And let's not forget about Witch at Black Mass. That Fiddle Ultimate providing lots of CC and disruption. Yeah, so the really interesting part about that Fiddle Ultimate, specifically with the Nocturne combo, is because the Nocturne takes away vision... Fiddle can ult from basically anywhere, and it's going to get those fears off. And you can see just how much damage it was able to do against that team that just had no idea where any of it was going to be coming from. Yeah, they, you killed the Nocturne, but um, Fiddle is able to finish it off and almost gets the dragon stolen. He's going to have to run away for his life. And now Samus, they don't know he's in there, but he's a little bit caught out. He might have to use a flash to get out. He doesn't actually have one. Oh, so it looks the like they're person. aware now. I think they are a little bit wary because of Fiddle. They don't want to be caught by him over the wall. But look at this, just trying oh, to man. dance back and forth. Worm Jones picks up the kill. Whoa, Zircon picks up a kill again in the top side. The Jacks getting the beat down from the Ram this time. Yeah, and that's a little bit concerning, uh, getting these early kills onto that Orn. He can become extremely tanky very fast. It's going to make it a lot harder for the Jacks to be able to deal with it. But now, Sean is looking for something. Not going to be able to find anything, though, uh, with the Leona on his back. And, yeah. uh, I mean, this is still a, an extremely close game, but going Ghost just seems to be able to find these, uh, you know, fights that are favorable time and again. And it's really bringing that gold advantage to a point now up about 1,000. They definitely are getting these mid plays Ooh. going again. The wow. Nocturne Fiddlesticks combo. They never saw it coming. Completely wiped by this fiddle here. And by the way, Nocturne wasn't even there. I mean, yeah, what do you even do though? You don't have to even have vision. Or you don't have to have even use Nocturne as actually engaging it. You just do it so you can get the the guaranteed fear. Um, and they can't do anything about the Wow. All right, Billows. Breath of Knockup. Renata Ultimate did do best to appeal. Looks like Leona's dropping very low, but just enough to CC. Oh, oh the oh. Renata passive gets the reset. Sam is saving the day. Fiddle still deathless at this moment. Meanwhile, Kilgar killing turrets, and Jax is just chilling in the top side, about to get a turret on his own. 
as Zircon went to defend mid. And now, looks like Going Ghost is turning on the Jets. Yeah, now up 4,000 gold as we were talking just 1,000 just moments prior. A huge, huge gold swing here. 4,000 is pretty significant, especially when you're looking towards now what the objectives are on the map as well. You have two uh, um, dragons already taken for this Going Ghost team. You have them taking these outer turrets uh, in both the top and the bot lane. And Zircon now is in trouble. All right, Arboreal going to find himself in a 2v1. It was just a bait. Oh, the stun lands. Worm Jones, nice. Oh, going to flash away from the horn as Arboreal is trying to dip, dock, dodge all these abilities here. But it's not enough. Adi Shah is going to burn the ultimate, but doesn't get a stun. The Cassidy does not. Going to be able to pick up the damage afterwards. Lucas zoning away, and they're all set up for a Rift Herald take here at 16 minutes in. Yeah, and they might be set up for it, but I don't think that this is the best option that they can do, especially when Fiddle oh, has the, the Fiddle ultimate. combo! The Fear gonna land on three, and he's just drain tanking in the middle of all of them. Cassiopeia picks up the kill, but Aisha trades for his life. Lucas trying to get out of here as well as Zircon gets shot in the back by a Varus Q, and Kilgar picks up the last kill there. They And that was the right call. Even though they killed a Boreal, they did use a bit too many ultimates, and then the turn around from this fiddle combo, they do get the kill back, but they lose that team fight heavily. Kragodonius, you're going to have to break all of that down for us here. Yeah, and, you know, once again, it's coming down to that Nocturne fiddle combo. The lack of vision on the side of uh, you know, TD Lunar here is just not significant. It, it, you just need more vision around the map. You can see all of this black space in basically the entirety of the jungle uh, for their team. And when you're going against something like a Nocturne, something like a Fiddle that can engage from so far away, you have to be controlling vision and they're just not doing it here. Um, you can see 26 vision score for the Leona, but outside of that, you know, they're just not... Uh, you know, up to snuff, you know, only nine vision score in the top lane, eight vision score in the mid lane, and they're just not able to keep up with what they need to do, which is significantly more wardy. So I really need to see them, you know, stepping up, getting more uh, map control, which is going to be increasingly harder now that they are down uh, so much gold, but it's something that's going to become necessary, especially coming into this mid game here where, uh, you know, they're just going to be able to do that every single time that the fiddle six and Nocturne ultimate is up. And so need to make sure that they're getting a lot of vision. CHJ needs to be getting around the map, warding as much as possible. You can see now, you know, he put down all of his wards. He's already trying to back and get some more um, because it's just not going to be uh, enough to be able to just have normal vision. You need to have it, a, a lot more than that. Um, so, you, you know, need putting... to see it coming, right? You can't yeah. let it be too late. You have to get that vision down to see wow. them grouping up. And yeah, that's a very very fast dragon and not to mention the third dragon here Cragadonia. so they're well on their way to securing a dragon soul yeah and td lunar has their backs against the wall here the biggest thing that they need to do though to be able to turn this around as i said you know having that vision extremely important as well as these side lanes you know the the rise he's not doing too bad in the side lanes he's able to survive he's able to farm up Get him some more. He has that row that he just got fully stacked here in the next minute or so. Um, as well as the Casio that has been farming well, but we need to be able to get them so they're not all packed up on top of each other. They have enough vision to be able to deal with this Fiddlesticks, not being able to just halt them in, in fear two or three. So they can't be clumping up. They need to have the Viego on the side. They need to have the Casio behind this uh leona as much as possible to keep her out of uh harm's way because she's going to be the main damage in a lot of these fights and she's just a little bit too far behind i think right now overall yeah rise not on two items yet lucas just needs a little bit more time roa on that ninth stack there trying to get it to that upgraded and here it is actually as i'm talking about it it's <laughs> level 10 there we go. But they definitely need to be finding that that kiting moment in these fights here. And they're having a hell of a time doing it with that Nocturne. Worm oh. Jones just pulled right into the loving arms of the Fiddlesticks. Gets caught on the second part of the ultimate. 
Addy Shot does provide the rest of the peel, but gets caught oh. himself. Cleanse gonna be burned for the Varus ultimate. Now Nocturne thinks this is an opportunity to go in, picks up the kill on Addy Shaw, and CHJ has to walk out of there, leaving his fellow bot laner Zircon on the flank, but they're already a massive member down. That backline threat of that Cassiopeia has been removed, and now the field is open for going Ghost, and they're taking full advantage, full push-up, full wards down. It looks like this is going to be a complete blackout in the river for going Ghost. Yeah, 21 minutes into this game, this is an absolutely one-sided, a 7,000 gold lead nearly at this point in the game is making this game extremely hard, and they're already, you know, very much their backs against the wall. However, uh, you know, as I said, it's going to come down to how these objectives end up going off the map here. We can see they're looking towards the side of the Baron a little bit early, in my opinion, but, um, you know, maybe something that they need to set up vision around because of the uh, just looming overall threat that this Fiddlesticks will have coming in the next couple of minutes. He's going to have that ultimate back up, and they could look to take it here pretty soon. That vision getting cleared so, so quickly that they just put up, though. Oh, Lucas gets caught in the stun. Tried to snare his way out of there, but Arboreal chasing him down. Wow. Picks up the kill right at the back end. That was a close 1v1, but Arboreal is going to be the one who wins it. And that's the Q, Krakadonius. Mm -hmm. It looks like Going Ghost says this is the time to take the Baron. And it's completely unchallenged i mean it's gonna be hard to walk in to renata varus and fiddlesticks here so they have no fear in taking this 1800 gone fiddlesticks secures it with the smite worm jones nowhere to be seen and it's looking like they have the tools to close out this game going ghost in the mid game are surging forward to pick up this win yeah and this is looking extremely dire um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm finding, you know, I'm trying to say, hey, these are the ways that TD Lunar is able to get back in it constantly, but it's just not looking good for them right now. They're able to set up the objective vision. They're able to get the picks in the side lanes. This team is able to do basically everything that they need to be able to win now, just a minute away from this Dragon Soul. And if they get that, it has to be lights out for this team. And it's looking like they will be able to Baron buff on five. Um, you know, a minute away, and they have complete vision control over this bot side river as well. Wait, but now, we're not a caught out. Uh, but he was just by himself. But however, very importantly, they do burn the Nocturne ultimate. Oh, the, the walk-in from Lucas there. That was a bit scary. Kilgar barely dodges, avoids that snare from Leona. Lucas trying to to time warp in there but isn't able to run warp in there but isn't able to get it off in time a boreal though look at this completely free on the top side that's a jack solo pushing your top side lane here you're gonna be giving up in hip soon if you stick around yeah and this is not looking good he's getting a lot of pressure in that top lane and they have the flank from the nocturne as well will he be able to find oh. anything but he might be caught out Spell shield, the slow from the smite, gonna be able to slow him. Worm Jones is gonna be feared away. And now everyone's just going in every which direction. This is complete chaos, which is gonna be fearing up the Leona and decides to walk out of there. We're not ultimate oh. to zone them back into his team, right into the fiddle's arms. And now they're just killing members left and right. Lunar just gonna have to run away. And now Zircon is the last one left. Kilgar has no fear tank versus a bruiser. It's just going to go ahead, walk forward, Baron buff in tow. They do pick up the inhib as predicted, and now they're getting that soul. They're picking up wins everywhere on the map. Yeah, and that was absolutely one-sided. Didn't even get a kill in response for it, but what a nice flank and ultimate from that Renata there to just completely negate any ability to get away from the Fiddlesticks ultimate. They did not have a chance in that fight because they weren't even able to use their actual abilities. They weren't able to really do much of anything. And you can see that coming out in full force now um, as they're just able to push down any turret that they want, getting that mid inhib turret, getting looking to get this uh, bottling turret in the few moments as well. And man, it is just absolutely one-sided now. 12,000 gold lead at 25 minutes is about as insurmountable as you could ask at this point in the game. And being able to have those realm warps to get across the map even quicker now is going to be extremely dangerous for a team that has so much mobility already. 
Yeah, this is some dangerous stuff here, and there's no scaling in sight. That is on the, that's past the horizon. <laughs> I was going to say on the horizon. No, it's past the horizon. It's not coming. They don't have a bailout. They're going to have to make a play, and soon, and there's not many options for them. They've been trying to kill, kill Gar of all people, but he's been able to worm his way out of multiple situations. And with the Hexel too, that Fiddle Alt, it's going to hurt. Yeah, he's been absolutely killing it. And he's, I mean, you can see he's basically full stack Magi's right now as well. He's going to be doing a ton of damage. 7, 1, and 13 on the game. He's just been absolutely obliterating this enemy team. And it's a combo that definitely needs to be looked at here for game number two as well. I think you're going to need to take away that Fiddlesticks in game two. All right, looks like a Ooh. bit of a 3v1. Looks like they're going to take that as the sign to kill on the top side, which picks up another kill. Aboreal, wow. wait a minute. Aboreal is going to be picking up a double kill. However, it says low HP bar versus Lucas. This is certainly going to give his team the opportunity to get pick up inhibs. Is going to kite out. Little bit of a pickle being set up by Lucas. Does pick up the kill eventually, but that stalled plenty enough time. And now Adi Shaw is just food for the rest of the team. Go and go is going to be picking up this win in 27 minutes. So TD Lunar stalled them longer than yesterday's games, but it ain't gonna be enough to take them out. Going Ghost are your victors in game number one. Cracodonius. I mean, what was the st what was the star factor for that game? I think we all have a feeling. Yeah, of who it was. I, I mean, we talked about that. Uh, you know, the Nocturne Fiddle Six combo absolutely obliterating the enemy team, and which at Blackness played that so so well from the beginning of the game. We talked about those early game uh, overall uh, ultimates coming out. We talked about those uh, even even the pre level six ganks that he was able to get on that bot lane getting kills early and getting him so, so far ahead um, for not only himself, but his entire team uh, looked absolutely amazing. The bot lane did a great job at doing their role as well. But overall for me, Witch at Blackmas, an amazing game, an amazing carry uh, from that jump role. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can come out with in game number two, assuming they probably end up banning his fiddlesticks. Yeah, I think the fiddlesticks definitely was doing the work there. And then Nocturne, huge assist. Kind of reminds me of the Doe and B-esque Nocturne Kennen. Same concept, yes. different champions. And so they were able to pull it off. I don't think TD Lunar had any idea what was coming to them. And it definitely stopped them right in their tracks. Yeah, it's definitely an unorthodox uh, typing of, of matchups there, right? You don't typically see the Nocturne mid. Uh, Fiddlesticks jungle is a little bit more... Um, meta, but still something that you don't see a ton of, especially in competitive play. So bringing that out here, catching them a little bit off guard, I think, uh, in game number one, but it was an absolutely amazing combo that worked to perfection in this case. Yeah, and we'll, we'll see if they can pull off more beautiful gameplay in game number two. We're going to go ahead and toss it to a break, get things all set and ready for an exciting game number two. We're gonna see you soon.
All right, everyone, welcome back. And we are here to be showing you Ghost in Space versus TV Lunar. This is game number two. Ghost in Space take the first game in a very striking fashion. 27 minutes in with this Nocturne Fiddlesticks combo. They're going to be picking up the win. And now it's just a chance for TD Lunar to strike back. Gragadonius, I'm expecting some certain bands might be coming in. I would be extremely uh, surprised if Fiddlesticks made it through this one. Obviously, I don't think the Nocturne's as uh, important because it just it went well with the fiddlesticks but I think the fiddlesticks was the, the root of all the problems there so I think you have to get rid of that here in uh, you know game number two if you want to have a chance to win because I don't think they had a very solid answer for it at all there it game is one and I, I mean it's gonna get out of there right away uh, makes a lot of sense here we're gonna get rid of the Zaya uh, on the other side Renata as well um, so they're changing up their bands completely here in game number two. Um, they are going to be laying up of maybe uh, some pretty strong picks there in the bot lane, though. Yeah, this is looking like a bot lane war. Caitlyn, wow. Zaya. Oh, they didn't like the Jax either. And look at this. They're going to go straight to that Varus. Now, Varus Renata is quite a potent combo, but that has been taken off the board. And now I would like to see what TD Lunar have as an answer. I mean, look, if if they did Hammer Ash, I'd be over the moon, but it's not good. Yeah, that would be a very interesting combo. Uh, obviously pretty good against Varus as well. He can't really clear those, uh, those turrets, but it's a pretty niche pick. So unless you played it in the past, it doesn't really make much sense to bring it out here. The Ezreal coming through. Um, makes a lot of sense, the ability to poke from far away, uh, similar to Varus, uh, being able to be a lot safer of a point, I think, than that Cassio in game number one. So I like it coming out here. We're going to have to see if it ends up working out, um, as well as the Soraka. Oh. So they are going completely different from game number one, where it was extremely, you know, get on your face, I want to kill you. This one's going to be, hey, I'm going to poke, I'm going to stay away as much as I can, um, and try to just stay safe, I think, in this bot lane, which might end up working out pretty well because of the aggressiveness of that that bot lane as well as the jungle combo in game number one where it seemed like they were getting camped pretty significantly. There was definitely a lot of action being pulled towards the gravity of bot lane there. Blind pick Fiora, wow. This is definitely some guts from Arboreal coming out here saying, hey, I think I'm pretty good at the top lane. Give me blind pick Fiora. I ain't scared. So yeah, just to I, see what Zircon's gonna draft in response. I, I'm interested to see as well. I think instead of uh, that being a blind pick necessarily, I think it was more of an assumption of, hey, I think you're going to go horn again here in the top lane. I know Fiora's a, a really solid matchup, so I'm gonna pick it now before you can ban it. Um, so that way they really don't want to pick horn in this case. And they're gonna have to stretch their legs and try something new uh, in the top lane where they just can't kind of just sit there and farm and try to get their tanks. And there comes the Malphite out for that hey. Poppy and Zircon. Uh, relatively similar to the horn pick, but um, a lot more engaged potential. But I think my biggest worry with the Malphite pick here is you don't have a lot to go off of that already. So what is their jungler, what is their mid laner going to look like so that way they're able to have a little bit of burst to help with that Malphite ult. Uh, yeah, I do think first probably going to take a chunk out of this mountain here. Malphite will eventually fall, but there is poke potential in the lane, so I think I can see what Zircon's going for. He's going to poke out for early game and then try to just hang from there. Swain, Elise, Cassid, and Rise. These are yep. both interesting directions to go in the draft, and they are all taken out. Yeah, a lot of mages getting taken out there. Now the Zac coming through, that's a lot of engaged potential from the side of TD Lunar. From the side yeah, they're of Well, they're definitely looking to go in. My biggest thing is now we need uh, probably either a burst mage or uh, some sort of, I mean, I mean, I feel like it has to be a burst mage here if they want to be able to do anything here um, in terms of like overall damage. I'm thinking you could go into something like a Lissandra might make sense here, or you can just go into AP Assassin as well, like the Apollo or the Fizz, um, or even Katarina in this case, I think it worked out pretty solid as well for this team, but we're going to have to see how it works out with Maokai on the other side here, looking like a Mal Maokai in the jungle as well. Um, we've seen it play quite a 
quite a bit here uh, at the beginning of this season and it looks pretty solid to be able to get those saplings around the map with relative ease the sims are going to be picked up to end this combo here and this is looking like another really good draft for going ghost in space looking to see how that ends up working out but i think the syndra um really rounds out this combo very nice oh okay they're gonna be pairing that up with a yasuo so two knockup champions for this mid laner to get that knockup combo and yeah the syndra pickup gonna be good i think people are kind of generally aware now that syndra works well into zach yep. with her knockback being able to pretty much gut zach's engage there but that can't do that to malphite though yeah, definitely. That trick don't not. work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is an unstoppable force that no one is able to uh, use there. You know, in between a rock and a hard place for the Syndra, if she's ever going to get Malphite boosted. But this is a Yasuo comp, you know, here, tried and true. The biggest problem, I think, for me is where is the AP damage at? They're going to build... It's the Zac. It's... I, I mean, I mean, but like, it's, it's just a Zac. I mean, I, I get um... it. It's they do have Soraka Malphite Zek. So maybe they're thinking with these three champions go, it yeah, equals one me. it equals <laughs> one magic damage dealer. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so but Zack can, can do damage though. Let's be yeah. real. Zack can do damage. He needs to get in there and he's a little time, but he does have damage in his kit. Yeah, so they definitely have a really nice engage here and a really nice follow up with the Yasuo. Um, the ability to be very safe in the bot lane, which I think they need to do here in game number two. Um, going Ghost in Space, a little bit, I mean, pretty similar to their game number one combo. As much Wombo as they did have with the, the Fiddlesticks and the, uh, you know, Renata and the Nocturne game one. However, there's still a lot of ability to be able to get on people, um, you know, with the Varus, with the Maokai, um, as well as, you know, his, his little updated ultimate now it goes a lot quicker. So it's a lot easier to engage on rather than before. Um, so gonna have to see how that ends up working out but i really do like um again both team comps look pretty solid the biggest problem for me i think with td lunar is hey if you're not able to get consistent um yasuo ultimates onto you know two plus of those carries where are we gonna find the main damage yasuo is gonna need to play this game super well as well as that overall um you know cc coming out from the mouth fight zach needs to be on point and on the right targets as well yeah, but if they do get in onto that back lane, the Varus Karma Syndra, if they're able to do it, they have lots of follow up So they're going to be playing the Peel game, Ghost in the Space. They don't have Renata anymore, but Maokai is going to be their man. And Fiora, how do you think Fiora is going to do these team fights? I don't think these are easy team fights to navigate for Fiora. So maybe we're just going to see Fiora on the side lane the entire game? Yeah, I, I think there's a really good chance that she might not be in any team fights at all until. You know potentially the very late game i do like the fact that she has the rough cost so they can't really cc her well they can't really yasuo hold her most time um you know unless unless she really misplays her unless they put a ton of cc onto her um so i'm really looking forward to her probably being in the sideline or the sideline for most of this game so it's, i think it's going to be a, a kind of tale of two teams where one team's looking to kind of go all in get on your face as much as possible especially on this back line that is extremely squishy in the Bears Karma Syndra. Um, and the other team is going to look to, hey, uh, we're going to be able to out macro on the map quicker than you. You know, using the Fiora, using the Karma um, to just get around the map quickly and be able to get those objectives, which was a big theme for Queen Ghost in game number one. And it's looking to be the same here in game number two. Just that overall control and getting around the map, getting that vision out quickly. All right, I'm just going to lay it down. Who do you think is going to win? Yeah, um, you know, based on game number one, I think Going Ghost in Space looks like an extremely, extremely solid team. Um, I think that they have a good chance to be able to win this one. However, I do like TD Lunar, and I love a good Wombo combo coming out um, from any team that's able to try to pull off a Yasuo comp. So I'm going to have to go with TD Lunar here. I really like the Ezreal pick. I think it works out pretty well with what they're looking to do um, with a lot of extended damage as well as that Yasuo being able to potentially one shot a lot of their big carries um, and Malphite being able to engage basically off the off the map vision as well as the Zac, I think makes a lot of sense for what they want to do so I'm going to go with TD Lunar for this game I want to see a game number three I want to hear the silver scrapes I know that's normally a game five but in this case this is our silver scrapes moment so I'm really looking forward to it and I'm hoping we get that game number three
All right. So before we hop into this game, I just want to talk about Nameless's sponsor here, W Energy, and they're here to revolutionize the energy drink game. They have themselves a formula with zero sugar and no calories shakes here, and it's going to be an absolute dream if you guys use their code, the Nameless, for getting a sweet deal for W Energy. And with that, thank you to our sponsors. We're going to be hopping into a break for our next game. All right, we are here, and we're back to see if TD Lunar can counterpunch in this matchup. 
Going to go ahead and five point it again as we have both teams coming to a collision here. You know, Cracodonius, I have a bit of an issue with your name. My let's name? Say, yeah, let's say I was lazy and I, <laughs> I just want to give you a nickname, right? I didn't yeah. want to say your full name. Well, I can't with your name. <laughs> you can't. You can call me Crack. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, I was, I was thinking about it with the A at the end. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That gets a little sus. I've definitely, <laughs> I've had people call me that in the past, and I'm like, "What are you calling me?" No, I'm just kidding. But um, well, that's definitely bannable. Uh, so let's not do that <laughs> on stream. But <laughs> it's okay. I'll I'll give you the pass though. You know, like a uh, have you, I don't know if you uh, are a fan of like any um, you know streamers outside. I, I watch a little bit of Hassan in my time. Um, oh, okay. Well, he did not. Did he get? Okay, he got, let's not he, talk about. That. Let's not talk about that. But he definitely got in trouble socially at minimum. He, anyway, he did, let's yeah. get, <laughs> let's get let's get back in this game. Um, as we have a top side start from Worm Jones up there, and it looks like Witch at Black Mass is going to be pathing opposite, going to top from bottom here. So, how's that going to play out in this match? Yeah, so again, we're probably looking for full clears from both of these guys. Um, they can both clear about the same in terms of speed, but I think in terms of what they're looking for, it's going to be, I think, extremely hard to be able to consistently gank into something like an Ezreal Soraka. So it makes sense that he's trying to path away from it on the side of the Maokai. However, a little bit interesting that the Zac is looking towards that bot side to, for uh, you know, a potential early game gank. So I guess we'll have to see how that ends up playing out. I don't think that they're going to have enough damage early to be able to do much about that. So I think that they're, it's more looking towards the mid lane rather than the bot lane. I think that this Ezreal Soraka lane probably doesn't want to do anything for the first, you know, 15 to 20 minutes of the game even. Uh, unless they have a really, um, you know, thing that is uh, balanced towards what they oh. want to do. Now, All right, early gank. Very early. Um, yeah, unfortunately, different. Worm Jones is not level 4. Not level 5. That's where the real Zach Electric Elastic Slingshot power comes in. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know what? Why not just chance it on an early game dive or yeah. uh, gank there? I mean, I think it makes a lot of sense getting that jungle pressure early in the mid lane. is going to be extremely important. You want to get this Yasuo ahead. Everything is going to be riding on getting him ahead and getting him fed. And if he's underfed, the, the team composition is just going to be significantly worse. So you know, putting all your eggs in one basket, in, in this case for Lucas and for TD Lunar, but if they're able to make it work, it's going to be extremely snowball -y. It's going to be extremely hard to kill that Yasuo, especially with his passive and being able to get that shield up all the time. Um, but now we can see um, both these junglers looking to, to finish their clear. Uh, Maokai is significantly ahead in terms of that clear because of that early game gank. Um, he's almost two camps up right now on this Zac, and that's gonna tend to snowball here, especially looking towards this mid lane. Is on top of a ward now, so he's not gonna be able to get anything in that mid lane. However, you know, both of these teams, they're just looking to do what they can. It's gonna be, I think, hard to find a lot of these ganks early. Um, you know, despite both junglers having a lot of CC, um, they don't have the ability, I think, to get on top of people really quickly. Um, outside of the Zach, if he is not on vision. Um, but a nice control of vision here so far. And again, we're going to have to look towards this mid lane, I think, for a lot of our action this game. Oh, and Zach coming here bot early. Yeah, Worm Jones behind. Nice. They get the knock up. Can wow. they get the combo first blood? Right go for Zach here. Worm Jones slams them together with the goo, and they pick up the first kill. And man, Boosis didn't even know that that was going to happen. Yeah. Just the warding just slips right through. Yeah, and what an amazing play here. I think it kind of goes a little bit unnoticed by that Soraka uh, in her silence. So the Varus wasn't able to outplay that. He didn't have the ability to ghost. He didn't have the ability to flash in that silence. And so he's just a sitting duck whenever that goes down. And then the, the Zach's able to follow up on it pretty perfectly they make sure she's going to be chain cc the entirety of the time and there just wasn't much outplay for the varus to be able to do uh really anything there despite just you know trying to be able to run away but um even that was just a little bit too late at the end of the day very nice gang coming out from the zach uh in this early game and we're going to need to see more of that 
in that bot lane, more of that in the mid lane if we want to see them continue to try to get ahead and take over this game. All right, looking for more plays from Worm Jones here. And Zircon in a bit of a dire strait. Had to back early because ran out of mana and the wave is pushing away. This is giving Arboreal a nice, a nice TP advantage. Samus are trying to make a play mid lane. Gets the tether, locks it up. Kilgar lands the stun. Oh. Doesn't use the ultimate though. Oh, what a miss. Wow, that would have been a perfect kill. Yeah, he, I mean, there was no, there was no way he was getting out of that. He just didn't use it. I'm not sure. It, maybe he wasn't quite in range, but... He definitely had the ability to do it oh, now. Worm Karma. Jones over the wall. They land a knockup combo, but it looks like he just flashed right out of there. Samus now providing lots of shield and poke damage on the way out. Mid lane is a wash. Yeah, and that was really scary there for a little bit, but Lucas able to get out alive. Fortunately for them, the scatter of the week wasn't quite able enough to be able to you know get that kill. Um, but um, now I think Yasuo needs to be uh, even more, uh, you know, important to make sure that he's getting that CS, making sure that he's staying with this Syndra as much as possible. Um, and, you know, with that Syndra mid-scope update, she needs to be able to farm. She needs to be able to get cannons to be able to stay ahead. So that way she is able to, um, you know, again, stay up with that Yasuo, with, uh, you know, everything else that's going on because she needs to be her own carry on this team as well in a lot of these team fights. They did change her to very heavily scale off the level now. It gives her a lot of points for those upgrades. Of course, if you hit a uh, champion twice, you get it as well. Nice dragon sneak from Warren Jones there. Nice and clean. Both lanes pushed up. No contest as Boreal is pushing in yet another wave here. And Zircon is happy to eat that right up, but is significantly behind the CS at this point. Yeah, almost double the CS of the Malphite at this point. Zircon not having a good time here in the top lane. I mean, kind of what we expected. However, you kind of have to buy into it. Now Malphite, or sorry, Malkai is here. Yeah, the tree coming right in. Luke is trying to dash out of here. And now, wait, does he have one wall? He could definitely block that. Is forced to use the flash instead. Looks like he makes it out, but just barely. Yeah, and it seems like just a little bit of, I mean. Wait, overchase? Barely. Oh. oh, okay. That was uh, that was very dangerous there, Kilgar. But Blastcone saves the day. Botling getting pushed in. And now, Cargadonius, what do you got here? Whew. Yeah, eventually we will be able to talk. You know, there's just a lot of action <laughs> happening. Um, you know, I know, you know, coming from somebody that has done play by play in the past, when you're constantly having things happen, your throat can absolutely hurt um, <laughs> really quickly, especially when you get into those late game scenarios. You know, you get... You know, you're trying to bring the hype still, and it's just constantly something happening. So, you know, we do what we can to try to give our people breaks when we have the chance to. Um, but having said that, I mean, I feel like, uh, you know, TD Lunar here, they're just barely missing on a lot of these plays. You can see there in the mid lane, the Yasuo, uh, you know, was able to get away just barely um, due to a little bit of... Uh, uh, I think misplay coming from the Maokai, a little bit of misplay coming from the Syndra, and it's really helping them be able to kind of stay up on what they have at the moment. Obviously, this game is dead even here at nine, nine and a half minutes. However, um, I mean, it could it, it could snowball out of control on either side, uh, I think pretty quickly with these team compositions. So I'm going to look to see, again, towards this mid lane matchup, you know, if, the, if they're able to finally find a kill, I think it could really snowball out of control really quickly. So I think, you know, if I'm the Zac on the on this TD Lunar team, I need to say, hey, I'm going to put as much as I can into you to try to get you uh, help. Or if I'm Zircon as well, maybe even look for a roam towards the mid lane uh, here if you get these this uh, Fjord to be able to back here soon. Um, just to be able to get as much as you can onto this Syndra. Get her killed, get her out of lane for a significant amount of time to be able to get this Yasuo uh, even further ahead. All right, looking for that Yasuo power spike. Uh, not anywhere near 0-10 deaths, <laughs> so I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. All right, Zircon just going to let that happen. I think he had Cheese Wheel up, but decided not to use it. Needs it for the push power, but he's low in mana. If a Boreal teleports up there, he could freeze this wave in indefinitely. I think that's the, the plan here. That's exactly what's going to happen. The TP coming out, uh, and Malphite's not going to have a fun time in the top lane. 
Um, but looks like in the bot side of the map here, we're going to have a little bit of action as well. All right, both teams jockeying for wards. Two minutes in on this dragon, and both teams want it. They want to pick this up. It is an Ocean Drake, not the best, uh, you know, one to get, but certainly don't want to give two to the side of TD Lunar here. Worm Jones farming away, picks up some CD, doesn't use the mana portion. And look at this full bot side control for TD Lunar, but full mid side control from Ghost going Ghost here. Yeah, and, you know, we're going to have to see, obviously, the very nice, uh, you know, setup for these. Oh, this might be actually be an engage here. Worm Jones looking for oh, something. Oh, trying to collapse. Samus is in the middle. They don't know yet. Malkai getting engaged. Worm Jones gets a heal from Soraka. Huge Malphite ultimate, but Lucas only gets one. However, that's going to be enough to pick up the kill. The execute was there. Meanwhile, Boostus getting farm in the bot side. Opted not to join into that fight here. Kilgar is had a Yasuo in her face for a few seconds, but it decided to dip out. Now they don't have much time as a Maokai gets knocked up. The Zack ultimate, and that is going to be enough damage to kill and so they pick up 2-0 here in the mid lane and they're looking like they are the ones who deserve that dragon yeah and drag it up in 30 seconds a boreal getting pretty risky here pretty far up uh with not enough health to be able to deal with zircon uh doesn't have the ultimate up yet however if he does get out up pretty soon could be a kill threat here Okay, gonna parry some of that E damage from Malphite. The wow. procs are hitting. And Fiora has an ulti, and Malphite does not, as you're mentioning. So I think Zircon should be very careful. Another stun gonna land. Kilgar does have the ultimate. Is it gonna be used? Samus here, they're trying to push in the wave. Multiple members from the side of TD Lunar oh. trying to get that engage. Zack goes wide. CHJ gets Kappa Malkai. Oh. Another combo. Well, this time with the Zack Q with the stretching strikes, but it's not going to be the play. Lucas did not have enough HP. There was not enough disrupt. CHJ couldn't get there to heal, and that's the Yasuo going down. Oh, oh wait. Is that the kill? The shield coming for oh. Karma. Ezreal Q goes. I mean, Ezreal goes wide. It's close. Worm Jones was trying to pick up that kill, but Samus just ruined his day. Oh, wow. turns his attention to this Karma. He wants revenge. Can he pick it up? Does with the auto. He said, you're going to save that Syndra. I'm going to take your life instead. Wow. And this game is a game of inches right now. The true shot barrage just barely missing. Could have picked up the Syndra. And these teams are barely getting away with their lives. Lucas obviously going down at the beginning of the fight. Now Zircon looking to play extremely aggressive here. He is down 40 CS at this point, though. He's look not looking to be in a great position um, to be able to take those uh trades but i guess it's working for him at this moment in time chj and the rest of td lunar looking to take out this dragon here soon but just setting up vision for now oh, and there it is. he was waiting in a bush the parry is it gonna be enough hits the oh. proctors and a little bit of healing another healing with the punch in the face zircon gets the kill yeah waiting in that bush a boreal did not respect the ultimate out of the bush from Malphite there. Zircon picks up that kill. And look at this. Um, I thought the support was supposed to hang around the 80 carry, but I guess I'm wrong. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think at this point, you know who your carry is supposed to be, and it's not going to be the Ezreal. Uh, at 80, Sean, obviously, he's a, you know, he's a pretty solid player. He's playing very well this game so far. 0-0-3. Zero, zero, However, he's not going to be your main source of damage here until maybe potentially very late into the game. And now he might be in a little bit of trouble here. All right, Eddie Carey oh. getting ganked by support. Not something you see very often. Oh, the heal from Sorok, a long now range heal. And now Worm Jones on the backside. Karma trying to get out. Solo Bolo from Adishaw. We'll just we'll just pretend on Solo Bolo as they <laughs> pick up the kill. That's a two and zero. Look at this scoreline, one and seven overall. TD Lunar, they're starting to take over here. They're getting the first turret of the game as well. And they finally are in position to secure this dragon. Yeah, and they're looking like a completely different team from game number one here. Taking over this game early for the side of TD Lunar. And they're going to be looking to take even more objectives now that they, the dragon is up. Basically going to be uncontested. And there it goes for them. Dragon number two 
going over to the side of TD Lunar and uh, Chem Tech Soul coming up. That's going to be extremely important for them to be able to get if they want to close out this game. But now Lucas in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, Kilgar and Sam is trying to kill Lucas. Okay. Definitely haven't seen that before. <laughs> they are always very, very close. And then Soraka comes in for the heals. It's the same story oh. as we have oh, again oh. Worm Jones on the flank. The crown going to stall for some damage, but now Lucas is oh. here. Malphite right on top. They're in the thick of it. He also lands a knockout right at the end. Then Addy Shaw is picking up the kill. 2 0 and 5. Doing great, and now they get to knock down the mid lane. The Zack and Gages have been deadly. The Zack and Gages, the Malphite follow-up there in that fight as well. I mean, it makes it extremely hard for them to be able to try to fight against it. The, sh the crown of the Shattered Queen, just not enough to be able to stay alive there for the Syndra. And I feel like they just can't be doing this, where they're 4v4ing or even 5v4 in the mid lane. Uh, I think they have to, you know, use their effectiveness for the side of GGIS to be able to find that Fiora in the side lane, give her some pressure on the side lane, let her do her thing, because these these team fights just aren't it right now. And you can see uh, TD Lunar just getting absolutely so far ahead because they're uh, able to just constantly find them. All right, Gigas, need to find a W to take control back into their hands is this the first roadblock that they are going to face in td lunar are you going to be giving it to them yeah. three minutes on this dragon and the rift herald is not in sight no objectives up here yeah we still have a few minutes before anything is going to happen here um obviously as you said rift herald is going to be down uh for the the, the entirety of this uh, and that's a few phase. So, I mean, we have two and a half minutes till anything even happens. So I think the biggest thing for, um, you know, GGIS right now, if they want to be able to stay in this, they can't be getting caught out. They can't be fighting at least here for the next, you know, I think about 10 minutes. And so unfortunately for them, they might have to be getting, giving up some objectives as a result of that. I assume probably the, the third drag as well as maybe even a Baron here and just kind of turtle for a little bit, you know, get that farm up, uh, you know, continue to get this Fiora ahead. Um, she is 0-1, but she's up 50 CS here in the uh, the top lane matchup as well. So make sure that she's able to get that side lane presence. Make sure she's on the opposite side of any of these objectives that are coming up as well. So that way she can get cross map uh, pressure with that teleport. And now she's looking to 1v1 Lucas. All right, Lucas, two procs down already. A Boreal has to chase down the Yasuo while avoiding Worm Jones. And that's an untenable situation. Decides to disengage there. But showing Lucas that this Fiora ain't no pushover. Mm -hmm. Mid lane, we have two carries trying to push it in. Worm Jones, thinking about that engage, decides not to go for it. Or tracks the slingshot. Yeah, this double carry in the mid, though. I'm not a fan. Yeah, I, I think you're just... You're, you're, you're basically just uh, overall splitting experience you don't need to do your splitting gold you don't have to um i think if you're the side of uh you know ggis here you have to oh worm jones might be caught out actually yep which at uh, black mass has found the goo man he hops right over the wall so rock is here to provide heals is it going to be enough arrow goes wide doesn't land that could have been the execute on worm jones but chj has basically save the life of zach here lucas whoa lucas you're out of position what are you doing here worm jones gonna be entering in the backside of boil is just laying down the pain with these procs here has the ultimate again lucas trying to get out of there and there's a lot of peel boil has to get right out of there malphite looking for a death combo does get it and lucas picks up the kill makes a return flight back over to a boreal here this dragon 30 seconds and it's looking like they're gonna pick it up three zero clean yeah and they do get a little bit of map pressure back from that fior or for sorry from the syndra from the varus being able to get those towers uh those tier one towers here and get a little bit of that waves pushing but i mean it doesn't seem like there's the ability to just find any sort of fights here for the fiora or for really anybody around this map and now they are probably going to have to give this 
dragon here. I don't see any way that they're able to get it. And Witch might be a little bit caught out. Yeah, trying to get the vision. They're going to back off for now. And as we have Oboral and Boostus joining Maokai here. They're zoning away for now, which is a good sign for them. They don't have the Malphite ultimate. But all their ults are coming up very soon. On the flip side, Maokai is going to probably be the last one with the ultimate. Oboral has it now. CHJ getting poked down. Kilgar oh. gets the kill on the Soraka. No one was protecting CHJ. And that was just a free pickup, and that is enough time to stall out. It wasn't a clean 3-0 dragon, and now it's 2-1. to one. Yeah, and that is going to be an extremely important objective. Now it, it stalls out the game at least another five minutes here because they're not going to be able to get that soul as early as they would if they got that soul sweep there. So being able to pick that up early, now keeping their eyes on the side of this Baron to be able to establish vision, establish a little bit more dominance here on the top side of the map. And you can see their vision on the top side jungle is absolutely amazing right now for the side of GGIS as well. They have wards all the way throughout the jungle uh, of the enemy TD Lunar side. And I, it's looking pretty good, at least in terms of vision, in terms of map presence, that they might actually be able to make something work here to where they can fight their way back into this game. All right, the map pressure, though, still going to TD Lunar. They've regained some of their control. And now look at this matchup. Oboreal is matching into Lucas on the bot side. They're going to send Yasuo, and they're going to have a good old sword fight in the bot lane. Yeah, I don't know if Lucas has a chance here, but we'll have to see if it works out. All right, one proc at two. That's the knockup. Lands the last breath. The third proc. Doesn't get the final proc oh, here. Lucas what? has the shield bow as well. Auto attacks his way through the health bar of Arboreal. And man, that is a close duel. Evenly matched swordsman in the bot lane. Yeah, Boost is just missing his ultimate as well there in the mid lane. Not quite able to find it just off. Um, but extremely close, as you said, in the bot lane. Um, you can see Arboreal, how just far ahead he is. 70 CS up. He is 0-2. But you can't tell that by the way he's able to fight this um, pretty... Um, yeah, it has 700 hard. gold, yeah. as you were talking about. So, yeah, yeah that, those kills not holding back this Fiora. Yeah, definitely, definitely so. Um, really nice control over this Baron Pit right now for the side of TD Lunar. Looking forward to hopefully being able to pick that one up here soon. And they want a team fight. Their pings are going on to the Baron. And they're saying, hey, we're going to take this if you aren't going to contest. And if you do, we're going to fight and kill you here. Yeah, Addy Shaw on this. Ezreal is pretty strong at these two items here. And Boosis does not have the same level. The zone coming out from Zircon. He's taking a lot of damage, but he's providing a safe Baron. They decide to turn it. They get the engage onto Kilgar, and they get up the kill. Addy Shaw's going to pick it up. Zach engage number two, and he's right onto Samus. And he's going to go ahead and get the pull, but the flash away makes that a bit awkward here. And that is a clean turn and burn. They have two rounds of engage here, Krakadonius. And they're just using it to full effect. Yeah, and it definitely seems like right now they're going to be able to turn their eyes towards that Baron. The Fiora doesn't have the teleport up, and she is getting that side lane pressure right now on the bot side. But with Witch not able to get anywhere near, it's going to be very hard for them to find Zircon. Getting a little bit low, oh, but so huge is Witch. Wow. Addy Sean. I mean, look, it, this Ezreal's not a tank killer, but at this stage in the game, look at that damage. He's going for more. Oh. Boostus does have the shield oh. bow, but they get the kill clean on both of them. Wait, CHJ. I thought CHJ picked up both of them, but Addy Sean did. And man, all right. They've completely taken over this game now with the Baron. Should be able to push it out and pick out a victory here. 34 minutes in. TD Lunar, they're looking like they're going to take it here. Oh, wow, nice parry, nice but uh, Arboreal, no mana, so has to run away. Yeah, the repository, perfect timing there to be able to use against that Keyblade coming from the, the Yasuo there. Worm Jones, I think, having a really great game here, but I think really unnoticed. I mean, we've talked about it briefly, but Adishon absolutely popping off right now. 6 and 7 on the Ezreal, up 40 CS as well on his counterpart of that Varus. And he's been doing so much work in a lot of these fights. I mean, obviously, the uh, focus has been on this engage coming from the Malphite, coming from the uh, 
the Zach here, but I mean, for the most part, he has been doing a, a good amount of work here. Those, uh, you know, the, the nice ultimates coming across the map, he's able to find a, a really good follow up on all of that damage and uh, C as well. And now, looking to fight. Oh, here it is, Lucas, right on the Maokai, the tankiest member, but it doesn't matter. They have the armor pin and they have the damage, which at Black Mass. Falls yet again, and look at this, six seconds away from that Dragon Zircon just smacking away this turret at the top side like he's a Jax. And it's looking like they have all the keys to their victory here. I would say so too. They have to double teleport up if they want oh, to. Oh, here we go. Oh, the flash like for it too as well. And some of that Moosey being taken away from Malphite Q here. He's walking away. There is a TP. He might be able to go to that friendly as Samus wow. walks back into the queue. Addy Sean picks up another kill. Zircon is strong enough that he can just walk away from a Boreal here. I think he could have went for the fight as he does get the the slowdown. The steroid not going to help out Fiora here. And now it's a turnaround. The reversal. No more ultimate as a Boreal has to get out. And he's got he's got to take some way out. And both of them don't look oh. nice. Whoa! Picks up the kill right at the end. Okay, got to give it up to a Boreal there. Was able to turn a bad situation into a neutral one. Man, and you're you're coming out here with a game of Uno, hitting them with those Uno reverse cards. All right, they they're going in on Worm Jones. Ahead. Unleash power, doesn't pick up the kill. He oh! survives the Soraka healing is overpowered. Adishan now has made it to the fight, and this turret should be dropping soon. Boostus is doing his best. Kilgar trying to... to to zone away and now worm jones and lucas getting in the back line it's so easy for them to pick up the kills there's no protection and then kilgar falls as well this is looking like they're gonna close it out right here crackadonius yeah a couple seconds left on these death timers fiora is alive with malphite soon to follow but i don't think it's gonna be enough 20 second death timers on the rest of the team here and they're looking to end it now their one turret is down Oh, they get the knock up onto Fiora, the very important member at this moment. They're going to pick up the kill. Lucas survives, and man, that is a clean ace. I mean, this is a slobber knocker. Both teams with clean games and roughly ending at the same time. TD Lunar strike back. They do have the counter punch, and we have just seen two teams going straight at each other. I can't wait for game number three. Game number three is going to be looking really nice here. We see a lot of potential, I think, coming from uh, TD Lunar specifically there in that game number two. And it seemed like that, uh, you know, maybe GGIS can't play the standard that we thought they might be able to. And so, you know, looking towards those non-cheese picks, their, their 5v5 in that game was just lacking there. And I think they didn't realize that they need to you know, kind of stay away from those team fights as much as possible. Obviously, TD Lunar taking advantage of a, a extremely bad team fight uh, potential coming from the Malphite and the Zac, and just absolutely taking every single fight they could, and it worked out in their favor overall. Yeah, the Zircon just said, "Hey, I'm not even gonna defend top <laughs> turret. I'm just gonna go for these kills, and I'm gonna smash your team while you try to smash these turrets, and we'll see who wins." And well, the answer was. It looks like TD Lunar does win that one. Fiora wasn't able to get pressure, wasn't able to lock that Malphite in lane and avoid those 4v4s, or avoid these 5v5s. They got the 4v4 many times. Zach getting those deadly engages in mid-game. They, they just stuck around mid-game too long, and now we do have that question that needs to be answered. Can GGIS play standard? Can they do it? They played something a bit wonky first game. It worked out really well. They might have another cheese strat that they're saving for finals. If you do, you might have to pull it out right now. Yeah, I think for both teams here, you have to pull out all the stops. Obviously, TD Lunar looked so much better there in game number two. They're obviously feeling a lot more comfortable now. I think you're going to have to switch up the bands a little bit here uh, in game number two for the side of GGIS as well if you want to see really solid results. However, um, there is a good potential to be able to, you know, pull out that game number three. So that way we're able to, uh, you know, have a good one either way back and forth here.
All right, that's going to close out game number two. And we finally made it. Krakadonius' wish was answered. Uh, game number three is coming your way shortly. All right, we're hopping in straight into the draft. Both these teams cannot wait. They have no patience. They want to settle this here and now. Who's going to take this series? Gragadonius, it's looking like these bands are very similar. Ghost and Space are saying, I think we just messed up game one, uh, game two. We're just going to do better this time. Yeah, I think that's exactly what's going to happen. TD Lunar going with their strat in game number two. The Varus first pick. Coming out once again, Ghost of Space. Seems like that's what they're most comfortable on, and it's worked so far in this tournament outside of last game. The Ezreal counterpick coming up. I want to see the Soraka oh. again. I want to see it once again. This The healing in last game was just absolutely tremendous, and it was hard for them to find any sort of counterplay to that, so they're going to have to find something here. I want to see some sort of engage coming out from yeah. this support in the bot lane. I think that's going to be extremely important. The Karma wasn't working last game for what, from what I saw in the most part, and they, there's the Zac steal away could be in the jungle or it could be in support as well i've seen that played quite or a bit top. definitely oh and the amumu oh my gosh they're going for the wombo combo as well taking that away from pd lunar saying i'm not going to let you do the exact same thing again we're going to do this instead we're going to come out with this cc make sure that you guys aren't even able to move not able to do anything especially for that soraka and the ezreal okay the amumu pick is interesting lots of lockdown potentially to kill this Ezreal and Soraka. All right, they liked Malphite so much last time that they're gonna pick it up again. Now, Ghost does not have any peel, so Malphite looking like a free entry for now. Yeah, I think the Malphite is uh, is fine. I think the problem is you're gonna have to probably ban also here in phase two if you're the side of uh, Ghost's space. Um, and there yeah, it goes, do. yeah. They, they get rid of the Fiora on the side of TD, I think as well makes a lot of sense here. Um, you need to prioritize these game champions that Ghost of Space has gotten so far. Zach and the Moo make a lot of sense. Malphite on TD Lunar, I think, makes sense as well. It seemed like he was something. It was something that is more of a comfort pick for him to be able to stay alive in lane, be able to make sure that he's getting to those mid to late game team fights where he can make the impact. Um, you know, even if he's not necessarily getting ahead here, I would like to see another um, fighter for a Boreal. I think that's something that's extremely important. Ram is coming oh. out here. 
that's okay. interesting to me. Um, again, you know, similar to the Zach in terms of the amount of CC that he can be able to put out, but just looks a little bit different here. Um, but again, we're going to need to see another AP threat coming out from uh, TD Lunar if we want to see a solid team fight here. Uh, you know, I've been talking about this entire series. You know, the Akali makes a lot of sense. Um, I know you briefly mentioned that Diana as well makes sense um, potentially to round out this composition for this team. And Mordekaiser in the top lane into a Malphite looks very, very good here. I think that's an amazing matchup for, for the Mordekaiser. It's pretty hard, I think, for the Malphite to do much of anything there. Yeah, Mordekaiser is going to have a field day against the tank on the top side. So it's going to be a strong matchup for Arboreal yet again we'll see if he can do something on this matchup instead here as we have the final pick coming down to the wire three seconds one and they go with Ooh. jinx wait what? a minute is this a wait, ap mid? vars i think so it's either i mean it's definitely a mid vars it's not gonna be a mid jinx so a very interesting combo here maybe i mean i know we talked a little bit about their cheesiness and the way that they pick things i don't i haven't seen a mid vars in so long I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, I think you pick some sort of assassin here. Makes the most sense to me into a, a Varus. Maybe a Zed would work out pretty well. Obviously, with the AP, probably not the best pick, but could. Oh, Gangplank. Okay, that's an interesting matchup. Varus versus Gangplank in the mid lane. Okay, well, Gangplank <laughs> does have a lot of burst damage. So I think you were thinking the same thing as TD Lunar here. And they opted for the pirate instead. Definitely going to be more of a scaling factor. And now we have our comps. TD Lunar, look at that front line, supported by a Soraka. I mean, these yeah. these guys are going to be tanking a lot of damage. That being said, Varst is a tank killer, as well as Jinx being able to provide lots of damage overall. Plus the Mordekaiser. So how do you think this is going to go in the straight 5v5? Who takes this win? Yeah, yeah. I think if you're looking at it on paper, I think Ghost in Space, they change up their draft a little bit. I think it looks better overall um, than the last game as well. TD Lunar, um, I think also on paper looks pretty solid. I think the biggest X factor here is how is this Gangplank going to be able to put out damage? If he's able to get these one-shot, uh, you know, barrels onto people that we've seen in the past, we've seen, you know, 3,000 damage barrels, uh, you know, come out from Gangplanks in the past. If he's able to do that, um, even a couple times in these team fights, it's going to be absolutely, um, it's going to be necessary, but it's, it's going to be very, very vital that he's able to get those off uh, consistently in those team fights, getting it onto the Jinx, getting it onto the Varus, and killing one of those extremely quickly in these fights. If he's able to do that, I mean, I think it's going to be very one-sided, the TD Looter, to be completely honest with you. Um, Gangplank in himself, in Ezreal in itself, those are the carries for this team, and they're a lot harder to kill than the Varus and the Jinx, the relatively immobile champions that are going to die very quickly. They don't really have a lot of ability to get around the map quickly. Um, Jinx, she could go for something like a, you know, extra movement and stuff like that with a, uh, you know, a, a different movement item or something like that. However, I don't think it really makes a lot of sense here with the Malphite, with the Ramus, and being able to not kill them if she doesn't go into something like a tank killer item. So uh, it's going to be a little bit hard if she's not able to, you know, have that mobility that you would like out of uh, a more mobile champion like Ezreal. Yeah, Ezreal's going to have lots of safety against the Zac, and the Mumu can basically zip out of there mm -hmm. whenever necessary. Not going to be the case for Soraka, so we might be seeing a lot more Soraka deaths this time around, Gregor yeah. And But this beastly frontline with a Gangplank to boot in the mid game and late game should be very, very scary. And Adeshawn, I mean, can Lightning strike twice here, Krakadonius? How do you think uh, Adeshawn's going to do in this game? I mean, we saw him in game number one. He was basically untouchable. Um, there was really no way that they were able to get on him. They have a lot better tools here, I think, uh, in game number three to be able to to get on top of him on the side of Ghost in Space. Obviously, the Zac, the Amumu, um, the, there is a lot of movement still coming out from that Ezreal, obviously. But I think that um, on paper, this looks like a lot easier of a way to be able to deal with that back line. Um, you know, with the ability to basically engage from anywhere on the Zac, um, as well as that Mordekaiser ultimate to pull one of those main carries out of the fight when it needed to as well. And 
a, you know, a kind of a, a big note as well. You could just take the Malphite out of the fight. They're not able to engage, um, you know, significantly with just a Ramus. Um, he basically just has to run at you and ult. Um, and that's that's a lot easier to deal with, in my opinion, than uh, something like a Malphite. So I think Mordekaiser looks to take out the Malphite in a lot of these fights. Maybe the, ga uh, the Gangplank doesn't make sense because of his orange. So you either take out, I think, Malphite or the Soraka early. Try to take those out of the team fights. Make sure they're like basically uh, not in factors. And if you're able to do that, I think the side of Ghost of Space is going to be able to pull this one out and uh, go for the victory. But um, it's going to come a lot down to the the orange usage of the Gangplank, how he's able to get those barrels placed down, and uh, you know those kind of things for the side of TD Lunar as well. Okay, who will be winning this game? Well, I am 100% in my uh, my prediction so far. That's true. Um, I will say, I think, um, you know, coming out of game numbers, TD Lunar is going to be on a high. They're going to be extremely confident. I think they're going to come in guns blazing, and I think that they're going to, uh, you know, come out with a victory in this one. I think Gangplank makes a lot of sense here. Um, my biggest problem is their, their lack of AP damage, but I don't think that will be a problem as long as you're able to consistently hit barrels and consistently, uh, you know, get on top of people with the Malphite as well. Um, so I think that TD Lunar has the edge here, um, coming out of the draft and coming out of their, um, you know, boosted confidence from game two as well. All right, they have the momentum. We'll see if that gives them enough to finish here. TD Lunar looking to complete the back half of this. And Ghost in space trying to get that reverse uh, finish here. Trying to cinch this victory. It's down to the very last moment here. Game number three coming in two minutes. Don't go anywhere.